Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Solar Entertainment. I'm your host, Nishanth Kelker, and we're going to be continuing our trend of reviewing movies from streaming services, this time with Studio Ghibli's Howl's Moving Castle on HBO Max. Let's get started. From master filmmaker Hayao Miyazaki, the director of the Academy Award winning Spirited Away, that is ancient sorcery. And quite powerful, too. This summer, experience the epic tale of a young woman transformed. So, Howl's Moving Castle tells the story of a young girl named Sophie who is plagued by the curse of the Witch of the Waste who turns her into an old woman. Uh, so Sophie seeks out the help of the wizard, the mysterious wizard, Howl, who helps her rid herself of the curse and the two of them figure out what's going on in the war-torn country that they live in. So throughout Howl's Moving Castle, there are a lot of themes present within the movie and a lot of them resonated with me. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about is the theme of age and the fact that age is just a number and your purpose in life is not really dictated by your age. So of course Sophie is turned into an old woman by the Witch of the Waste and at first she's really down about this but she goes on this great adventure with Howl, Calcifer, and Marco, the other occupants of the moving castle. And she learns so much about herself and she grows through this amazing experience. So this made me think that you can go through amazing adventures and real personal growth any time in your life and you can't really wait for um, a certain point in your life for something big to happen. You have to kind of chase it yourself. So that's a real um, powerful theme that I loved within Howl's Moving Castle. So another theme that resonated with me was the theme of love and family and acceptance. So in the beginning of the movie, Sophie doesn't really have that strong of a relationship with her real family of many sisters and her mother. But when she meets Hal, Calcifer, and Markle, she develops a really strong connection with them and that made me think that your real family doesn't have to be the one that you're born into. It can be anyone else, your friends or anyone else in the world that truly accepts you for who you are. And that was um, a real prominent message that I found within the movie that um, Sophie's friends outside of her family really accepted her for who she was and truly loved her for that and that resonated with me a lot. So another thing I really liked about this movie was the character of Sophie herself. So in the beginning when we meet Sophie she doesn't have a lot of self-esteem, she's uh, very to herself and not very outgoing as most of her other sisters are. And this is because she doesn't really think highly of herself and she personally doesn't see herself to be very beautiful. And then of course the Witch of the Waste curses her and turns her old. But what I really liked about Sophie is that she really took this in her stride and she dealt with it in a very mature and positive way. And throughout the course of the movie, even though she's old and um, physically very old, she really teaches us, the audience, what the true meaning of the word beautiful means. Because it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be beautiful on the outside, but the things that Sophie does really teaches us that beauty comes from within. And sharing that beauty within with the rest of the world is what truly makes you a beautiful person. So the fact that Sophie really exudes that um, quality really resonated with me in the movie. I really enjoyed that. I really liked that character a lot. So the final pro I'm going to talk about with this movie is the animation style and the character design within the movie. So the animation style and the character design is very reminiscent of all the other Studio Ghibli movies that are out there. It's got that um, sig uh, significant and very um, signature um, artwork that is done and it's very colorful. To me, 
Uh, that's what really stood out to me. And a lot of the character design is very reminiscent of what that character really means and what that character expresses. For example, the mysterious wizard Howl is very flamboyant and colorful and flashy in his character design. That really uh, adds a lot to his character and that design really develops throughout the movie as his character develops as well. And I don't want to give too much away with that, but I really enjoyed how the character design and the animation kind of told its own story. So my only real downside of this movie is sometimes it can be a little hard to follow on your first watch. Um, there are some t uh, parts of the movie where uh, there are dream sequences and visions and you don't really know what's reality and what's not. But after a second viewing, uh, once you come back to the movie, you kind of understand it a little bit more with your first viewing under your belt. And another thing is that um, there are some exposition and uh, character backstory elements that are quickly glossed over in some parts of the movie, but that's a small little nitpick that didn't really detract my experience in the movie too much. So overall, Howl's Moving Castle is a very heartwarming and wholesome movie. It's got very great messages and themes about purpose in your life, about how age doesn't matter, about love and family and what the true meaning of beauty is. It's got amazing characters and amazing animation character design within the movie itself. And I give it an 8.5 out of 10. You guys should definitely watch this on the new streaming service HBO Max. And uh, along with Howl's Moving Castle, HBO Max has the rest of Studio Ghibli's catalog, which you should definitely check out as well. So that wraps it up for this episode of Solar Entertainment. Be sure to check out Howl's Moving Castle on HBO Max and stay tuned for more streaming service movies coming on the way. I'm Nishant, your host, signing off.